So for this video, we're going to look at the concept of Lewis structures. Specifically, we're going to go over how to come up with a Lewis structure, which is just a way of, orga of I'm not going to say organizing, I'm going to say representing a molecule and where its electrons are. So the idea is, behind Lewis structures, electrons are, and it doesn't have to be just a molecule. You can do it with an individual atom, but it's not as useful. We don't use that as often, although it does come up. So this is going to be a way of telling you where the electrons at in our molecule. We're going to mostly use this for covalent compounds. That's where it's most useful. After going over the structures themselves, we're going to talk some about different exceptions that come up. I'm not going to try to make you memorize a giant pile of these, but there are a couple that are common enough that we have to go over them. We'll then go over structures that are called resonant structures, where there are multiple possible answers, and we need to decide which is the best answer among our possibilities. And then we'll do a bit of practice. So to start with, to actually go over what a Lewis structure is, I'm going to start by drawing one, and then I'll tell you what I did, where this came from. So I'm going to look at the molecule CCL4, which once you finish this area, like once we finish this video, you will know why I draw it like this. And I'm going to explain what everything represents and then where I got this from. So CCO4 is a molecule that has five atoms, one carbon atom, four chlorine atoms. The, each of these dots here represents an electron. And when we draw, and if I've got two of them, that'll represent a pair of electrons. These lines here, so you also have lines that occur between the atoms, that represents a bond which is two shared electrons per line. So the dots represent electrons that just exist on one atom. Like this chlorine, we're going to say, has six dots. So it has six electrons that stay on the chlorine. This line represents two electrons, and they're shared between the carbon atom and the chlorine atom. Now, another thing to notice before we go over how I actually got to this structure is that I'm not showing every electron in the molecule. We know that chlorine has more than, seven elec than eight electrons, right? Because we only have two shared and then two, four, six. But we know that chlorine overall, if it's going to be a complete molecule, is not a complete molecule, a complete atom that's happy with where it is, it's going to end up at 18 electrons. That's because it's trying to get to the electron configuration of argon. So what we're drawing is just the valence electrons. We're not worried about the core. So now, how did I get CCO4? Why did I draw four lines? Why did I draw six dots on each chlorine? And why did I put carbon in the middle? Let's go over that now. And this is my first time with my home board. We'll see how well this works. So what we do when we have a molecule is we have to do a few things. So step one, how many valence? I need to know how many valence electrons there are, or else I'm not going to know what it is I need to draw. So how many valence electrons are there? So first, we have one carbon atom, and we have four chlorine atoms. So we need to figure out how many valence electrons are on each carbon and each chlorine. And from there, we'll be able to figure out what, how many total valence electrons we have in our molecule. So carbon, if we look at our periodic table, is going to have four valence electrons. There are four chlorines, and each of them is going to have seven valence electrons. That means my chlorine is going to be a total of 7, 14, 20, 28 electrons. My carbon produces 4. That means if I add both of those together, so I'm going to add them, I'm going to get 32 electrons is how many my molecule should have. Well, now I've got to draw the electrons. And to do this, I'm going to start by figuring out what atom goes in the middle. So we put our least electronegative atom in the middle. So that's going to be carbon in this case. Chlorine is a halogen. It's further right on the periodic table. Our halogens are going to tend to be the atoms that occur on the end because they are very electronegative compared to the other atoms on the periodic table. We then have to connect it to every atom in our molecule. Right now we're looking at Lewis structures where there's one central atom surrounded by some other atoms. We're not going to yet look at structures. How would I figure out something where there's multiple center atoms? Then you'll have some more knowledge and you'll cover that a lot more in organic chemistry as you build some intuition about your molecules. Now we start by putting a single bond between the middle atom and each external atom. 
It's possible that there's more than two electrons being shared, but that'll be later in the molecule where we figure this out. We start by assuming, let's just assume there's just one bond. Now what we do is we count how many electrons we've drawn. So I've, each line represents two, so I've drawn two, four, six, eight electrons. I started with 32, I've used up eight, that means I have 24 electrons left over. The leftover electrons are going to be added as lone pair electrons instead of shared. And what we do is we start by putting them on the outside atoms, and we fill up all the outside atoms until either A, we run out. If I run out, I have to stop. I can't invent new electrons. Or B, I have extras at the end. If I have extras, I'll put them on the middle atom. And sometimes I'll be exactly the right amount, like is going to happen in this case. So it doesn't matter which chlorine I start on, but because they're the same atom. If I have different atoms, I will tend to start on the more electronegative atom. So here I'm just going to pick this chlorine, and I'll add them two at a time. So two, four, six. Once we've added enough to get this to eight, it now has a full octet. So six lone pair electrons, one shared pair. Chlorine is now happy. It has eight valence. Then, so we've used up six. So now I'll go to the next chlorine. Eight. 10, 12, it's full. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. I exactly ran out of electrons when all four octets were full. For this reason, for the molecule CCl4, I would now be done. And the way I check that is I go to each atom and I say, hey, does this have a full octet? All four chlorines have eight. This carbon in the middle has two, four, six, eight. It's also complete. That means this molecule would be happy. Now, that's not always what will happen, so what we're going to look through now is a bunch of different cases that would cause us to have to do more. So this is the simplest case. You start with one atom in the middle, connect it to all the others, then fill it up with valence electrons till everybody's done. So let's look at cases where it wouldn't be quite this simple, and this will be where we're going to cover all of our exceptions and additional parts of this rule that we have to think about. So let's take an exception as our next point because it's an exception that comes up a lot. Hydrogen only needs two electrons. That's because it can't have an octet. There is no 1p orbital. Electrons. So the molecule CH4, it's going to look a lot like our CCl4, except the valence will be different. There's one carbon, so 1 times 4. There's four hydrogens, and they each have one. That means when I add these up, I'm going to get eight valence electrons. Hydrogen can't be in the middle. This is because since it doesn't need a full octet, you can't bond multiple things to it. So if I've got hydrogen on the end, I know in my molecule it has to be on the end of something. It can't be the center atom. So I'll put a C in the middle, and then I'm going to attach it to each hydrogen. Now if we count that up, that's two, four, six, eight. We've actually used up all of our electrons already. Now, in many cases, there's some other things we could do. But here, each hydrogen has two, and that's all it needs. So this structure would actually be done here. So it's done really similarly to CCl4. It just turned out that it didn't need extra electrons to work with. That was all. OK. So first rule, hydrogen only needs two electrons. I'm going to go over the other two exception rules, and we'll do those next. So if we get, if you have beryllium, beryllium only needs four, and boron only needs six. Now, these won't come up quite as often, and in this class, we're not going to worry about the exact reason for this. We're just going to go with this is a rule, and they come up enough that we want you to know it. So I'm going to take an example for boron, and I'm going to look at BF3. So let's take that molecule. So here, boron is going to be less electronegative because fluorine is a halogen, and it's our highest halogen in our periodic table, so it needs a lot of electron density. So we have a boron, and we connect it to three fluorines. Note, I don't care how you draw this right now. We'll talk about it later in the semester, why it is I would put my fluorines in this triangle shape. So if you had done something like this, fluorine, 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 that would be OK for now. I'm not worried about what order you put them in. We will talk about that in more detail. And I'm going to switch sides. I just realized I've been walking out of the screen. 
So now you'll actually see me most of the time when I'm talking. So we're going to do this. It's fine if you drew it this way, though. We haven't talked any about how atoms would arrange themselves and why they would be in particular orientations. So now, let's go back to the same strategy as before. Count our valence electrons. So boron, I was over there because that's where my periodic table was. Boron is going to have three valence electrons. So we have one of them, and that's going to be three. That's going to be my boron. And then my fluorines, for those I have three of them. We're going to multiply that times seven. So this gives us three plus 21. We're going to need 24 electrons drawn. We've currently drawn six. That means we have 24 minus six. We have 18 electrons left. So now I'm going to start on any fluorine I want since they're the same atom. 2, 4, 6, it's full. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So now my BF3 is done. I have all the electrons BF3 needs. And that's because boron doesn't need more than 6. It's content there. So this is the last of our exceptions for things that don't have enough electrons. So now I'm going to erase this, and we're going to look... It's some other examples that start to deal with things like double and triple bonds. What happens when we have too many electrons? Also, so now let's take a look. Let's consider another molecule. I'm going to do one where we have some lone pairs in the middle, actually, first. I forgot about that. So you've seen water. Water is really common. Let's talk about its structure. Oxygen is going to be more electronegative, and I'm going to put it in the middle. And again, I'm drawing it like this, and we'll talk about in a later chapter why that is, but for now, if you drew it where it was a line, that'd be okay. This is more true to its shape, but it's okay if you drew it like this because you wouldn't necessarily know why I'm drawing it like this yet. So either is fine. So water, we have one oxygen atom that has six. That's my oxygens. My hydrogens, I have two of them, and each has one. That means I have six electrons here, two electrons here. Adds up to eight electrons total. So now, this represents four of them. So I've used up four, so I have four left. Now the rule says you go to the external atoms first. Hydrogen only needs two. Both hydrogens are full. So then the follow-up question is, what do we do with the last four? Well, you take all the extra ones you have at the end, and you put them on the middle atom. So I've got to put four more dots here. So two and two. And there we go. This is our water molecule. And if you'd drawn it like this, you could draw dots here and dots here. And that would work A-OK. -okay. So now we have a water molecule that's going to... There we go. That'll make it so it's not shiny on the bottom. So now we have our water molecule. Now, I said I was going to look at double and triple bonds next. So let's see what we do when I don't have enough electrons to make everybody content and filled with octets with single bonds. Let's take the molecule O3. Since it's three of the same atom, they, I'm just going to put one of the O's in the middle. And I'll put an O over here to the left, and an O over here to the right. I have six, I, have, I only have one type of atom. I have three of them, and there's six of each, so that's going to be 18 electrons. Now, I've used up four, so I have 18 minus four, I have 14 left. So we start with the external atoms. So I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We've used up 12. I now have two electrons left. We just said you put them on the middle atom, so I put two here. In this case, though, when I go to my step to check, is everybody okay with their octets? The external oxygens are good, but the middle oxygen not is, is not. He doesn't have enough electrons. Now we have to figure out a way to get the middle atom to have more electrons. So what we do is this oxygen asks one of his friends next to him for help. He goes, hey, look, I don't have enough electron density. Can somebody else lend me some of their electrons? So in this case, both oxygens are the same, so it's not going to make a difference where we take them from. So let's just say he goes to the left. He could also go to the right. So he's going to go, hey, buddy, can you share some? And the way we share them is we take this lone pair and we turn it into a double bond instead of a single bond. So now we have an oxygen. It has... Four electrons left. I'm going to draw it a little different. I'm going to draw it like this, so it's symmetrical. It's okay if you left them to the left, that'd be fine. I have an O here, and then the oxygen to the right still has eight. So now this is going to be one of my Lewis structures for oxygen. For, sorry, for ozone. 
for O3. If I have them connected, this auction needed to borrow from the one to the left. Now, I'm as a foreshadowing, you also could have done this shape I'm drawing here, where you borrowed from the right one. We are going to momentarily talk about what you do with the fact that there are actually two answers like this and how you deal with that, something called a resonance structure. Before we can get there, we have to do a little more. But just to mention that, yes, this is an issue that comes up. We will deal with it momentarily. So this is how we can get a double bond. We borrow electrons from somebody else. If you'd had a case where it was short two pairs of lone pairs, it could borrow twice, which would either mean two double bonds or one triple bond. So you can keep sharing and you keep doing it until the center atom gets up to eight. Now, let's look at another case of where you have an atom that ends up with more than eight electrons. So now we have to add another rule. I forgot this was magnetic and stayed on my board. Where to think the molecule SF6? So our additional rule is for the center atom, if it is in the third period, so row three or lower, it can actually have more than eight electrons. Now it doesn't have to, but it can. So because of that, I can actually bond this S to six different fluorines, even though that gives it more than an octet. My external atoms will not do this, just my middle atom. And we call this an expanded octet. So our atoms in row once we get to the third period, so the third row or below, can have an expanded octet, so more than eight electrons. Now, the only time we're going to do this is when we either have extra electrons we have to put on the center atom, or if it's bonded to more than six things. So you don't have to predict, like, oh, wait, should this molecule have that? You don't yet know. You don't have enough chemistry knowledge to be able to go, well, this one definitely should have more. We're going to have cases where you can predict it using the rules I've shown you. So you either have more than four atoms attached, or you're going to have extra electrons at the end and you have to put them on the center atom. So here, going back to our rules, sulfur, there's one of them. It has six electrons. Fluorine, there's six of them. That has seven electrons. So we have six, 35, 42. So we should have 48 total. And we've currently drawn two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 12 electrons. So we get 36. So now, Start filling up the externals. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, and we are done. It has exactly the right amount. You may notice a lot work out like that, and that's because I'm giving you molecules that really exist. So a lot of molecules will turn out where they're just right. Now you notice this took a little while to draw. Another thing you can do is we can shorthand the drawing of the dots on the external atoms by using lines to represent those pairs. So you'll see stuff like this sometimes, where people will draw lines, and those lines are meant to represent two electrons each. I think this is harder to read, so I tend not to do it this way. But I understand that speed is important to people, and if you were to see this somewhere else or did it on a homework or something, I would accept that as well. So you'll see where they draw a line each time instead of two separate dots, and that can help speed things up. Now, I'm going to stop this video here because I do want to talk about resonant structures, but I think that needs its own video because this is already a little long. As soon as my monitor turns back on. Come back, monitor.